Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of every heart here be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, happy Easter to all of you as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. As we celebrate the resurrection, we need to consider what it means for us today. Why is it important for us that a man almost 2,000 years ago was brought back to life? Most of the things that we celebrate in our life, we have a connection with. We celebrate our birthdays. We celebrate the 4th of July because it marks the beginning of this great country we live in. Next month, this church will celebrate 150 years of ministry here in Cheyenne. And we celebrate that because we are part of this church. But as we celebrate Easter, what is our connection to the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Well, leading up to Easter, our sermon theme has been focused on the, the connection with Jesus as our Lord, as the pathway to God. The gate you see on our front steps has holds the images that Jesus used in the Gospel of John that describe our access to God through him. Jesus said, I am the gate. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the light of the world. I am the vine, you are the branches. I am the good shepherd. Today, as we celebrate his resurrection, we will look at his proclamation to Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus then asked Martha this very important question. Do you believe this? It's not easy to believe in something as incredible as the resurrection. Many of you might remember the well-known Ripley's Believe It or Not cartoons that were popular back when I was a kid, filled with incredible stories that challenged one's belief. Do you believe this? There was a border collie, a dog, that was trained to fetch 1,022 items by name. Do you believe this? A baseball player once threw a baseball 445 feet, a record that holds today. Maybe you believe this, a little closer to home. The Green River Wyoming Airport has been designated an intergalactic spaceport, <laughs> open to the inhabitants of Jupiter to take sanctuary there. Or maybe do you believe this? In 1895, there were only two automobiles in Ohio. Only two cars in the whole state of Ohio, and they crashed into each other. <laughs> the question that Jesus asked Martha about the resurrection is important for us today. Do you believe this? Do we believe Jesus is the resurrection? And do we believe in Jesus' resurrection on Easter? It is through our faith in Jesus, our belief in the resurrection, that we receive the new life God offers us, that God promises us a new life today, a new life also for eternity. Do we believe this, that Jesus rose from the dead? Mary Magdalene came to believe this through her personal encounter with the risen Lord. Early on that first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. She was shocked by what she found, an empty tomb. She could hardly believe that someone would steal the body. As she made her way to the tomb, she was overwhelmed with grief. During the events of the last three days, Mary Magdalene had never left Jesus' side. She was at the cross until Jesus bowed his head and gave up his spirit. She accompanied his body as it was taken down from the cross, laid in white linen, and laid in the tomb. Most of us are familiar with the heavy grief that weighs on a person those first few days after losing a loved one. As Mary was carrying these spices to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body, that was the grief that she was weighed down with. Well, just as we can imagine her grief, we can also imagine her shock when they found the tomb empty, open, the body gone. We can feel her grief through the weeping, 
The appearance of the two angels offer no consolation. But her grief turns to joy. It turns to joy when she discovers something even more unbelievable, something more incredible. The body of Jesus isn't missing. Jesus is standing right beside her. Jesus has been raised from the dead. Do we believe this? Jesus is risen from the dead. It's challenging to believe. In the Gospel of Luke, when Mary told the disciples, they did not believe her. You're all familiar with Doubting Thomas, who refused to believe until he touched the wounds in Jesus' hands. But Mary Magdalene believed. Mary Magdalene believed this because she saw the risen Lord standing next to her, calling her by name. Over the next 40 days, Jesus would appear to the disciples and to many others so that they too would believe that even though they had seen Jesus crucified on the cross, that he was now resurrected to a renewed life. Do you believe this? Jesus Christ has risen from the grave. This is the foundation for our faith. As the Apostle Paul wrote, if he was not raised, then our faith is in vain. It's futile. This is our connection to Easter. The resurrection wasn't just an event in the history of the church. Our belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the key to our faith, the key that unlocks the door to new life for us. Do we believe this? That not only is Jesus resurrected, but Jesus is the resurrection. In the story of Lazarus, Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. Jesus promised new life after death. Jesus made this bold promise to Martha, like Mary Magdalene, while she was grieving, grieving the loss of her brother. And when Jesus and Martha meet, Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. But Martha had faith in Jesus. Martha had sent for Jesus when her brother was ill. And she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Martha had faith in Jesus. Had faith in Jesus' power to heal people. She believed Jesus could have prevented his death. But what Jesus wanted her to believe was that he was the resurrection, that he had the power to defeat death, not by preventing it, but by bringing new life out of death. The resurrection implies death first and then new life. Without death, there is no resurrection. When Jesus said, I am the resurrection, he is promising he can bring new life out of death. And as she is grieving, Jesus encourages Martha to trust him. Do you believe this? Jesus was offering hope to Martha. Not only would Lazarus receive new life, but Martha would receive new life as well through her faith. Lazarus' resurrection would lead Martha to believe Jesus is the resurrection, that Jesus can bring life out of death, hope out of despair, can give new life. Do you believe this? Do we here today believe Jesus is the resurrection, can bring new life out of death? The Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians that we are dead through our trespasses and sins in which we once lived following the course of this world. We have all heard accounts of convicts in jail whose lives have been turned around through their faith in Jesus, who have been given new life. Well, William Barclay writes in his commentary, death and resurrection do not need to be so dramatic as that. A person can become selfish that they are dead to the feelings of others. A person can become so involved in the petty dishonesties and disloyalties in life that they are dead to honor. A person can feel so hopeless that they are filled with an inertia, which is spiritual death. Jesus Christ can resurrect these people too. The witness of history is that he has resurrected millions and millions of people like them. His touch has not lost its ancient power. 
This past week, we were all in shock as we heard the news about Notre Dame burning, the great cathedral in Paris that had stood for almost 800 years. As it burned, the Parisians felt a part of them was dying. One Parisian said, The heart of Paris and my country is being gutted by the flames. I am devastated. It wasn't just a building. It embodied part of their culture, their faith. But after the fire was put out, through the ashes of destruction, most of us saw that well-publicized picture of a cross shining amongst the ruins. Out of the ashes, there is rebirth, a new life. After death, there is a resurrection. Notre Dame will be rebuilt. Well, two weeks ago, we were just as shocked to hear the news about the burning of the three churches in Louisiana. Burned not because of an electrical problem, but purposeful, by a sinful act of an artist. Out of the ashes of death, these three churches will also experience new life. New life through their faith in the resurrection. New life through their faith in Jesus as Lord. They too will be rebuilt. When we experience the tragedies in life, something dies within us. When we go through difficult times, difficult broken relationships, something dies within us. Do we believe this? that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, with power to renew life after death. When we face the unbelievable, the fires of life that consume us, do we believe that after the ashes, new life will be there through the faith in Christ, that Jesus is the resurrection, and even though we experience death, we will through him also experience new life. Henry Nouwen wrote this, On Easter morning, we can still feel the pains of the world, the pains of our family and friends, the pains of our hearts. But now all is different because we have met Jesus and he has spoken to us. There's a simple, quiet joy among us and a deeper sense of being loved, loved by a love that is stronger, much stronger than death. I have met you, dear Jesus, and now all is different. The good news of Jesus, the resurrection and the life, is that there is new life and hope through him after death. And do we also believe this, that Jesus is the life? Jesus made a second promise to Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who live and believe in me will never die. We know that Jesus wasn't talking about physical life. It's not true that we will never die physically. We will. What's that famous quote? The only certainty in life is death and taxes, and with the right CPA, only death is guaranteed. <laughs> we cannot escape it. But this verse promises that Jesus is life, and therefore in him there is life before death. What does this mean? Well, one thing it means is that believing in Jesus Christ gives our life new hope, a new life, new meaning, a new purpose with new blessings, what John called the abundant life. Our life, how we live, matters to God. He wants us to have a life blessed with the gifts of peace and joy, a life of purpose in using our gifts to love and serve others. When Jesus said, those who live and believe in me will never die, he was talking about the death that sin brings into our lives. The Apostle Paul warned that the wages of sin is death. But if we live and believe in Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, he gives us a life free from the power of sin. Our sin does not define us. Whatever has happened in our past, does not determine our future. Our lives can be changed. We can be changed. A new life can begin today because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. You may have read or seen the book by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Lord of the Rings. Tolkien was a Christian, 
And in fact, it's him who is credited with leading C.S. Lewis to Christ. Tolkien, like Lewis, used his stories to reveal the truths of Christianity. Well, in The Lord of the Rings, one of the main characters is Gollum. Gollum was pitiful and wretched. His greed and selfishness had consumed his life. But when he meets Frodo, the story's hero, he experiences kindness and compassion. And that changed Gollum forever. But a complete change did not happen immediately. The change was a process, and his old self and new self were battling for control of him. There is one scene where his old self and new self are fighting, and the old self tells Gollum that he is no good, that he has no friends, no one likes him, finally that he is a liar, a murderer, and a thief. Powerful accusations, mostly true about Gollum, but his new self fights back. His new self fights back against the old. His new self responds first by covering his ears, by saying he's not listening. But that doesn't work. It's only when he remembers the kindness and compassion of Frodo that he overcomes his old self. It was the kindness that Gollum had ex received and experienced that gave him new life, that set him free from his old ways that gave him a new life. This is what is offered to us in Jesus Christ. The love we have received from Christ gives us a new power that sets us free from our old ways, our old selves. Our failures are not fatal. If we live and believe in him, we will not experience the death that sin brings into our lives. We know we are forgiven. So we gather today to celebrate Easter, to celebrate that we believe the resurrection of our Lord and Savior and the new life that he has. We also gather to celebrate the new life we have through him, the new life we have in this life and the new life we are promised for eternity by believing in Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. Happy Easter.